Hertz cuts it back the other way. What the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, what a so dumb play. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would they run that play? Oh, th this is I what I need. I don't understand the play calling. This is what Get I need. Get Swift in there. He's killing them. What is that bullshit? My God, this is such a stupid, stupid coach. They're stupid. <laughs> They're stupid. Oh, he's going. He's he's getting closer to the edge. You take DeAndre Swift out of the game and you run two bullshit goals. Mm. Get Sirianni fucks ass. Oh wow. It's just ridiculous. Oh wow. Philly 500 melting down. So stupid. Every week, stupidity. I'm so sick of the dumbness. How can you be any dumber? Oh. Can you take DeAndre Swift out, and then you run two plays like that? Oh. I mean, get that! You can't afford to kick field goals. You can't stop them on defense. You have to score touchdowns. You defense stinks. Oh, uh, well, good morning, friends. Marco was here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope that you had a great 2023. I hope 2024 will be even better. I have to say thank you so much for the Philadelphia Eagles because they truly made the year end up with a bang. I can't remember a New Year's Eve that I have enjoyed more after the year, the way it started out with the Philadelphia Eagles, their fan base literally trolling me all offseason, talking about Dak Prescott, the turnover machine. The uh, He's throwing another interception that Hurts was so much better than, the Dallas, than, than, than Dak Prescott that the Dallas Cowboys were ass-ass. And looking and listening to all of the talking heads, the Joy Taylors that were talking about Dak Prescott and how much he sucked or how much he was a choker. And here it is, the Dallas Cowboys are still standing with the opportunity to win the NFC East and keep the streak alive. That's right. There is this little thing that has happened with the NFC East. It's not like any other division in football. The Philadelphia Eagles were the last team to repeat, and actually they were a three-peat. 2002, 2003, 2004. They won the division. I'm not going to say because that they were just awesome, but some of those years were down years for all three of the franchises. They literally won by default. But be that as it may, it was an incredible feat. Something that no team has done since then in the NFC East. And we're talking about the New York Giants winning two Super Bowls. We're talking about the um, Eagles going to three Super Bowls. That is if the Cowboys win on Sunday. No team has repeated as NFC East champions. And as crazy as it seemed, because going into the season, it seemed like the Philadelphia Eagles had all the momentum. And it seemed like they had all of the luck going into this season as well. That they kept getting these games and finding ways to win, living by the sword and die by the sword. And it finally caught up to them. When you looked at the rosters going into the season, you looked and you said, Man, Eagles have a better roster. They got a better offensive line. They got the momentum of being in the Super Bowl last year. Jalen Hurts was on a tear. A.J. Brown was literally unstoppable, especially early part of the season. 125 yards a game, like six straight games, and was looking like he was going to be the receiver to challenge Tariq Hill. But all of a sudden, all of that just came crashing down. The Eagles have become, over the last five weeks, one of the worst teams in football. The only victory they've had since San Francisco and Dallas and things has been over the Giants. And that game was in doubt going into the end. 
They ended up letting the Washington Commander score 31 points and having to beat them one time in overtime and have the fourth quarter in doubt. The Eagles, they do have 11 wins, but they ain't playing good at all right now. And I hate to say it, but I believe my channel numbers will start come crashing down because all of the trolls that weren't regular, you know, that, don't, don't get me wrong. There are great Eagle fans and friends, and shout out to Philly 500, congratulating us on the NFC East. And I'm thinking that that's reverse psychology that he's trying to get us to relax, and we mess it up. We ain't won it yet. We ain't won shit yet. We beat the Commanders next week at 425. We've got the division. Now, here's the deal. We will be at FedEx Field. Um, red zone lot, red zone lot. Okay. Red zone lot. It's the lot to, to tailgate on because it's got a back way in off of Sheriff road. You want to be coming in off Sheriff road and it's right by the school. You come in there. Parking passes, uh, are $50. I don't know how many that they still have left. Um, you may need to get a ticket as well to get them because I know things are getting scarce because cowboy fans are buying them up real quick. Um, if you check the community tab, there's a post in there with the link to uh, get the tickets. The tickets are $199 in club level, okay, section 315. And this is key because um, at the moment, the long range forecast has it about 40 degrees as the high temperature, and it's a possibility of snow, but that's supposed to end early in the morning. So, okay, understand that's on the Maryland side of DC, which usually just gets rain. If you get on the Virginia side, you know, further west, it ends up being where the snow is. So if the weather is cold, it's frightful outside. If it does happen to rain, you want to be in the club level because you can stay in the club concourse and watch the game and not get cold and wet. Um, the tickets are $199, and there is no extra fee on it. Club level, we're at club level 315. It's corner end zone. So if you uh, can't find the community tab post in there, um, email me cowboysmark94 at gmail, and I will give you the uh, give you the information on there. Um, we will be setting up. Uh, we'll be in line before 12 o'clock um, to uh, get set up, and it won't take us long to get there. We cannot stay in the parking lot. Um, like we've done in the past with watch parties. So we're going to be focusing in on getting our eat on and getting the truck loaded up and getting into the game. So that's the information on that. Um, we're not charging for the tailgate, but what we do is we ask if you want to donate. We have a donation button to PayPal to help cover the cost of the chicken wings and all that stuff because the food cost, as you all know, is not cheap. But we want to make sure everybody gets comes in hungry, gets fed, and comes away with the NFC East crown. So right now, some things to be extremely happy about. We all know that the Dallas Cowboys have been 3-5 and five on the road. It has not been good for us. Hopefully we can end up being 4-5 and five, you know, going against the Commanders with nothing to play for except for the number two pick in the draft. Um, Hankins... Should be ready for playoffs. Um, Tyler Smith definitely should be ready for playoffs. At this point, it's all hands on deck. The question I actually have is, do the Cowboys look at possibly trying to give some of the players like a Tyron Smith less reps in that game? I look at this and say, we want to win this game. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. We need to go out there, take care of business, get people off the field. Because you look at what happened yesterday to Miami. Tua hurts a shoulder. He says he's going to be okay. It's not a big deal. But Chubb looks like he ended up getting his ACL torn. And that is a huge loss for the Miami Dolphins uh, going into the playoffs, going against Buffalo this week as well. And you have to wonder where they're getting blown out by 30. Why are those guys still in the game in the fourth quarter? And this is where we can't afford to have anybody hurt. Um, if we get those two guys back, for the most part, you know, I, I will say that nobody's healthy at this time of year. It's really who's hurt the least. The pounding of a 17-game season 
is hell on the body. You're just trying to make it across the finish line. But we are in pretty good shape if we can get those two guys back. And the focus, of course, now, it's already Monday. Wow. Overreaction Monday. And it is getting ready for the commanders. Um, for me, I'm going to be here today and tomorrow. Uh, probably go back home Wednesday morning. And from that point on, it will be nothing but getting ready for the tailgate. And I hope you guys can, can join us and um, that we have a great time together. In the meantime, I want to enjoy the Eagles' loss. I know it's wrong to, to be happy about somebody else's misery, but you have to understand how many bullets I have taken for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, I absolutely positively love doing this. I am a true blue diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. I have been my whole life. I love waking up in the morning talking about the Dallas Cowboys, even in the off season, thinking about what we did right, what we did wrong, how we can get better, and so on. And trolls out there just love to suffer, make you suffer. They get off on just making fun of you. And I have been made fun of more times than not by all these Eagle fans. And now I want a little payback. I want to enjoy this a little bit. So let me listen in this morning to get up to hear what they have to say because now it's time for all of these talking heads who have been on the Philadelphia Eagles bandwagon about how great they are, a championship pedigree, and how they'll get it together, how they respond now. Toward the Super Bowl, how did they get here, though, Rex? Well, I think they played the whole season this way, and they were they were a, a bad ten and one team. They they could have lost several of those sure. games. Now, and we gave them a pass because they had the championship medal. They found ways to win, but this team, and I've said it from jump, they lack the knockout punch. Mm -hmm. They don't do it. They don't bury teams they're supposed to. They're way up in that game. You got to bury them with your you know winning at the line of scrimmage with that great offensive line and yeah. pounding the football. And where the hell is the defense, man? man? Like, when is the last time the Philadelphia Eagles were ranked 31st in the National Football League? This defense is, I mean, and I look at it this way. As a coach, the first thing I look at, look at 31st in the yeah. league, points per game, 31st. Bottom at everything, count. Rex. Mm. They stink. Mm. They stink. And here's what I look at. Do the players stink? Or are they playing like, are they playing bad? Are they are the players bad or are they playing bad? Yeah. Well, we know they're damn sure playing bad. Right. And I don't see anybody attacking the line. I don't see anybody getting knocked them back up front. I don't see anybody getting off blocks and being committed to making tackles. A hundred and, and what was it, 106 yards were yeah. before contact. Right. They gave up 200-some yards rushing right. to the Arizona Cardinals. Like, this is unbelievable. Anything can't happen in your building. You know what? You, you've watched this team, though. Now, the Arizona Cardinals will bludgeon you in the run. James Conner is an absolute war oh. daddy. But also, in watching this team, remember a few weeks ago, it was about yards after the catch, whether it was Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, yeah. also some of the things we saw from the Dallas Cowboys. And I thought that that Matt Patricia move was to get a team to play with effort, yeah. was to get a team to play with physicality. But none of those things have changed, Dan. When you look at this defense, not only from an effort standpoint, but from an X's and O's standpoint, what are you seeing? If it doesn't get better, they're going to be one and done in the playoffs. That's the worst loss, both stakes and oh. opponent-wise, in 20 years for Philadelphia. <laughs> the, the too soft on third down schematically. No one got off blocks. Their interior of their offensive line got pushed around. You don't think other teams are going to do that in the playoffs? This is third and five. Both corners are eight yards off. This is pitch and catch for an offense. I'm calling a quick out at the bottom of the screen. This is routes on air. We call that ROA, routes on air. Catch, throw. No corner challenge that throw. We're going to get pressure off the slot. Blankenship's got to drop down. This is catch on catch and throw. ROA, routes on air. Kyler Murray's going to catch the snap, throw the ball it. to the first down marker. No contest when it comes to the defense. Easy first down. That, that was the story. I felt like I was watching the Green Bay Packers defense which is something we've talked about for three yeah. years right now, schematically so soft. Watch the interior of this defensive line. You tell me you don't miss a player like Hargrave. I'm staring at their numbers, the defensive tackles. Yeah. I can read their numbers from the sideline. That's not good defensively. The interior of that defensive line that was supposed to be a strength 
for this unit. Again, this is another hole. Now I can read the, in, the, the numbers of my offensive line because they have turned the defense so much. And then Rex kind of intimated this. Someone's got to get off a block. Yeah. They, they don't have guys right now that are getting off blocks. Count them. I think right they're now, saying they're ass One-on-one -on -one losses. You can't get off the block. 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 <laughs> This is the story of this defense right now. And oh. we have one week left. Philadelphia's in the playoffs. Hey, I missed what, both, what by the way. They gave up 116 uh, rush <laughs> yards before, before contact. contact what defense and 105 in, afterwards. Yeah. What defense in the NFC playoffs right now do we have less faith in? None. Oh, Maybe man. Green Bay if they, if they win and get in next week. But I, I, I think for, none, for, RC. None, none that are in the playoffs Detroit, right now. Not one team. They look like a juggernaut. Not one team that is clinched <coughs> looks like the Philadelphia Eagles. But the problem is this. It's not just the defense. Don't get me wrong. The defense is bad. Yes. The defense hasn't played at the level we saw them play last sure. year. But we're also watching a quarterback and the offense not execute like we saw it either. RC, they ran 26 plays after halftime on offense. One went to AJ Brown. Yeah, that's if you what? That's a but they but think about it. They oh, had made boy. that change since about week three of the season, and they, they understood how much he needed the football, how he could win against double teams. Go go to their final possession when they get down in the red zone. It's first and fifteen. They go quarterback run. It's second and fifteen. They go quarterback run. It gets to third and twenty. They call timeout and they throw a perimeter screen. <laughs> so in the final three plays. Of a game that if you win, you got a chance to win your division and cl stay claim to the number two seed. The ball doesn't go to Dallas Goddard, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, or DeAndre Swift. Yeah. But you're looking, you're looking at a team with zero identity. So with that oh, being said, Rex, it. how does it get fixed? Well, I mean, first off, the identity last year was they were bullies. Yeah. The head coach is a bully. Mm -hmm. That's why I like them. You know what I mean? Nick yeah, Sirianni. You punch a bully but, in the face. I mean, are you the only bully? Mm -hmm. Like that offense? I don't know line. if it can get bully? fixed. Yeah. No, I, 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 don't, I don't know if it can get fixed. I, I, it has to get fixed. This defense, man, and here's the thing. Attack the damn line of scrimmage. Yep. That They are not doing anything like that. I don't know who the hell's linebackers are coaching linebackers, but they... This is garbage, You know what's man. weird, too? Like, I, and I don't remember seeing this before the change at defensive coordinator. I'm seeing Hassan Reddick drop back in coverage yeah. Yeah, way was, too often. Which, yeah, which he, was, he was the yeah. one guy doing what he did last year. Yeah. He was the one dude getting pressure. Hassan Reddick was the one dude wreaking some sort of havoc in the backfield. This team has gotten soft. And I said it the first time I said it, people looked at me like, don't call people soft. I'm not talking about the individuals. Right. I'm talking about the way that they play defense. Rex, is it that much to do with the coordinator that this team on both sides of the football doesn't even resemble the team that played in the Yeah, I, I absolutely think so. And, and that's what happens when you shop at uh, Kmart. Yep. You know, go get a guy with no experience. Can't get him off that way, Rex. Stuff. Like, give me a break. They should have gone out and tried to get me. I get it. All right, that probably wasn't going to happen, but I damn sure, I mean, get somebody and, and get somebody that, you, the head coach, man, are you, are you that big of a bully? They get a bully that, that's with you, yep. you know, that'll go back in in Philly and represent the damn community. You got somebody soft as hell, soft as Charmin. That's think, how this defense is playing. Think about it, right? Now, so if Tampa Bay wins next week, they're in. They would win the division, and I think Philadelphia would have to go on the road and play in Tampa. Yeah. And, 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 and it, it would be Godwin? right. It would be very hard to pick the Philadelphia Eagles over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers right what? now, even with watching them play the way they did against the New Orleans Saints. Let's Let's go. Back. All right, there we go. The pirated broadcast. It would be hard to pick the green. Excuse me, the Philadelphia Eagles over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, keep in mind that last year we blew out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me that the, wow, that, that's just unbelievable to me. All right, good people. We are done with this this morning. We are going to have some fun today, of course, with uh, the Eagle fans. And um, I know I, I, I'm just going to be talking to space because they won't show up because they are, in fact, cockroaches. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you. Peace.